Hi everyone, welcome to the tutorial for sequential probability ratio test. The sequential probability ratio test is the likelihood ratio test for sequential and IID data, which can choose the most likely data generating model given two candidates. Since, it's, uh, since it's, it can only test upon two hypotheses, SPRT is usually used for estimating binary model parameter. Let's suppose we are given a dataset with capital N samples with two candidate models P0 and P1. We know that the data is generated from one of them. In order to pick the most likely one, we calculate Sn, which is the log of data likelihood ratio under P1 and P0. If Sn is greater than 0, we use P1 as our estimation. If Sn is smaller than 0, we use P0. Otherwise, we flip a coin. If the dataset is composed of independent and identically distributed samples, we can further factorize the likelihood function and write Sn as the summation of individual log likelihood ratios. OK, let's now consider the case where we don't have a fixed dataset, but instead that data come in sequentially in time, which means that we only have one measurement at a time. Now we can define Sn as the accumulated evidence after seeing n samples. In this case, as a, new, as a new data point comes in, we can simply update Sn incrementally by adding the evidence from new data point, like this. Now that we don't have a fixed data set size, we can take as many as samples as uh, we can take as many samples as we want. But it will be totally meaningless and a waste of time taking infinite amount of samples. So a stopping rule is usually required to tell us whether we've got enough data to make a decision. It's usually defined as a function of the accumulated evidence or the history of that. Altogether, the SPRT is the online likelihood ratio test for sequential ID data plus a stopping rule. When we make decisions, we usually want to be fast and accurate. However, these two objectives are contradictory with each other when data comes in sequentially, since making new measurements always takes time. So we need to find a balance between decision speed and decision accuracy by defining this stopping rule. For example, if we are sensitive about time, like we are choosing which direction to run when some animal is attacking us, it's good to make decision within a certain amount of time. This is called the fixed time stopping rule. Or if we care more about making accurate decision rather than fast ones, we could, we could set a threshold of evidence and keep making measurements until we've gathered enough evidence. Whichever stopping rule we choose, there is always the speed accuracy trade-off. Now let's take a look at some sequences of data randomly generated from the orange Gaussian distribution shown on the right here. Our goal is to estimate from data which one, left or right, is, is the true data generating distribution. In the case of fixed time stopping rule, we will make a decision immediately after seeing a fixed amount of data. So we could either make a faster decision but with more errors or we can make a slower and more accurate decision. It is, it is similar in the case of a thresholding stopping rule. Now we, won't, uh, now we won't stop taking samples until the accumulated evidence crosses some threshold as shown here. We will show later that a threshold on accumulated evidence Sn is actually a function of the confidence level or our desired error rate. The speed accuracy trade-off is similar here. You could either make an accurate and slow decision, or make a less accurate and fast decision. In this tutorial, you will implement and simulate SVRT with linear measurements as a drift diffusion model, which will be explained later. You will implement and simulate two stopping rules and you will explore the speed accuracy trade-off under different signal-to-noise ratios.